In this video, we're going to talk about Salt Cloud. Now, Salt Cloud is the cloud management and provisioning system that's built into Salt. It allows you to manage virtually any public or private cloud, as well as some non-cloud infrastructures in a cloud-like way. So we're going to be focusing today on talking about how to configure Salt Cloud, how to execute Salt Cloud to spin up cloud resources, and then show how those cloud resources then directly tie into an existing SALT infrastructure, making the management of them very, very, very smooth. Now, SALT Cloud's configuration happens across a number of files so that we can abstract different aspects of the cloud infrastructure that you're managing. Now, the providers is the configuration for a specific cloud provider. We've got a brief example here of setting up a provider for Linode and one for Amazon EC2. As you can see, different providers are going to require uh, different credentials and different information so that you can properly access those providers. Now below that we've got the concept of a profile. So first the providers is how are we going to access a cloud of a specific type and then the profiles are the profiles of the systems that you are going to define per cloud and so what we end up looking at here is that we have a profile that is defining the image to use on the cloud as well as the size of the resource to use on said cloud different clouds can support more functionality um, than just the image and the size of the image, but those are the basics that are applicable across all resources. And then a map allows us to specify many different virtual machines that can span different profiles and different providers so that you can easily specify what an infrastructure looks like against, again, multiple providers. And then the nice thing about maps is that you can define as many maps as you want and then call those maps in different scenarios. Salt Cloud providers can be stored under slash etsy slash salt cloud dot providers dot d. This is the normal location that a salt uh, master in the salt cloud command is going to look for these files. Inside of cloud providers, you can define individual files to uh, define each cloud provider so long as they end with a .conf as this one does uh, for Linode. And then inside of those files, it's just a YAML file again. And so we're able to set up whatever the values are that are needed to configure that specific cloud. Again, each specific cloud's requirements for configuring the providers is documented um, on SALT's documentation site, again, for each cloud. Now, once we've got some, some providers defined, we can move forward into cloud profiles. So we can go back into cloud.profiles.d and create more YAML files that end in .conf, which define exactly the profiles that we want to create. Now, those profiles, each of them receives a name, um, which is that top-level key that we're defining inside of the YAML file, followed up with the provider that's going to be used by um, this specific profile, as well as the image that we're going to be using and the size. And so now we can reference these profiles when we're creating virtual machines so that we can have a consistent way to create virtual machines moving forward. So the next thing to look at is map files. Map files allow us to create these virtual or create a map of uh, virtual machines that, again, are going to be created on the cloud. So what we're able to do is specify the name of the virtual machine that we're going to create and then the, prov and then the profile that is associated with that virtual machine. We can also add some extra virtual machine specific configuration that's going to show up in that virtual machine inside of the map file. So for instance, we can specify or add information about grains that we want to be on that virtual machine um, or configuration options that we want to impose onto that uh, minion that gets spun up in the virtual machine.
Now that we have the configuration files in place, we can start to use the, the Salt Cloud command on the command line to reference profiles and maps and create cloud uh, virtual machines and resources with them. And so the first command here is salt cloud p, where we are referencing Linode Ubuntu, which is a profile which we made earlier in the demonstration. And then we're able to send a space delimited list of virtual machine names that we want it to create. Now, this is going to create these virtual machines serially, one at a time, one after another. We can also pass to these commands the capital P command, which we will see a little later in the demonstration, so that these, vir so that these virtual machines are created in parallel. The salt cloud command allows us to execute or create or ensure the creation, I should say, of all of the virtual machines that are defined inside of that map file that we made earlier. So when we call salt cloud m for map and then take a path to that map file, then what we're going to get is an item potent creation of the virtual machines that are inside that map file. So if you rerun a map file that uh, already has some of the virtual machines created, Salt Cloud isn't going to recreate them, which makes it easy to define what an entire infrastructure of virtual machines looks like inside of a map file, and then run it as many times as you want to and get all of those virtual machines up or add something to a map file, rerun the entire map file, and we're only going to create those new resources that we have created in the map file. Now we're going to use the salt cloud command to execute a cloud map. So as you can see, we are using the dash p option to create the virtual machines in parallel. We execute salt cloud dash m with the cloud map, and then salt cloud gives us a summary of those virtual machines which we are going to create. So in this case, we're going to create virtual machines cloud one and cloud two. Now, once we accept that we're going to create these virtual machines, Salt Cloud goes out and does the work. This may take a few minutes to create all of your cloud resources. Salt Cloud will go create the virtual machines on the cloud and also log into those virtual machines, install a salt minion, and set up those virtual machines to connect back into their respective salt masters. Once all of those cloud resources have been created, then Salt Cloud is going to show you a summary of the freshly created virtual machines and information about them. Now that we've been able to create the virtual machines using Salt Cloud, they've been able to also tie into the Salt Master that we're running the commands from. So by executing Salt Key, we are able to see that the keys have been securely pre-accepted by Salt Cloud on the Salt Master. And we can also see that these minions on these new virtual, virtual machines are available to execute commands on, as we can see by doing a simple test stop ping. Keep in mind that now that these machines are connected into your Salt Master, they can be fully managed and all of the capabilities of Salt can be brought to bear to take care of those machines. Also keep in mind that you can automate beyond this by using things like the Salt Reactor so that as soon as those virtual machines spin up, the salt reactor can pick up the event that they have started and execute states on them, or you can use startup states in the configuration of the minions so that the first time that they start up, we run a specific state run on them so that we can have that complete process of creating a virtual machine in the cloud and have salt automated all the way to a full, fully deployed, fully working device. So now I want to take a quick look at using Salt Cloud D to destroy virtual machines. Now in this example we're using a cloud map to destroy all of the virtual machines inside of a cloud map. And so as we can see when we execute Salt Cloud D against a cloud map it asks us beforehand if we are sure that we want to destroy all of the named virtual machines that Salt Cloud has found under that map. And then when we accept it, it goes out and destroys those virtual machines. Once those virtual machines are destroyed, you'll notice 
that the salt keys have also been removed from the salt master and we can no longer access the minions that were on those virtual machines because of course they have been destroyed. Salt Cloud as of this recording supports many public and private clouds and so we've got a list here of many of those supported clouds and interfaces. As you can see we've got things of course like Amazon Web Services and DigitalOcean and Google Compute Engine but we also support the ability to use Salt Cloud's facilities to control LXC containers as well as OpenStack and um, Parallels and other things like Open Nebula, so that we've got a very broad range of cloud controls abstracted all into this unified salt cloud environment. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. Hopefully, this will help you get up and started with Salt Cloud. Of course, we have extensive encyclopedic documentation about how to use specific providers, how to use specific commands. And please feel free to explore the documentation and help that comes with the commands as always.